Singapore on the alert against MPOX as it becomes a global health emergency for the second time in two years. All travellers must report MPOX-related symptoms upon arrival. And with more on the MPOX outbreak, I'm now joined by infectious disease expert Professor Tiki Pang. He is speaking to us from London. Professor Pang, welcome to the program. Now, th this is the second time, Professor, that the World Health Organization has sent out a public health alert on MPOX. The question is, should Singaporeans be concerned? Well, with any potential infectious disease outbreak, of course, everybody needs to be concerned, but certainly I think not to go into a, a panic situation. I think the, the risk is probably a bit lower compared to COVID, what happened during COVID. I, I say that for several reasons. The first one is that this particular MPOX variant that's causing a lot of concern at the moment has not, as far as I am aware, spread beyond Africa. Second is that this virus is not spread through an airborne route like COVID uh, was. So I think the risk of global transmission is perhaps a little bit less. And also the air travel connections between Africa and Singapore and Southeast Asia is probably a bit less than what happened during COVID. So concern, yes. Panic, no. Okay, Professor, but the last global MPOX outbreak uh, affected more than 30 cases in Singapore. Can you help us understand why that many people were infected uh, from this disease that originates from so far away? Yes, but the 2022 outbreak, if, if you recall, that actually spread to more than 100 countries around the world. And I think what happened was, you know, with the resumption of travel and movement of people around the world uh, post-COVID, uh, it, it's just a matter of time uh, before the virus can spread to different parts of the world. Although, as you said, it originated uh, from uh, a part of the world that's far away from Singapore. So uh, that is just to be expected. It's exactly what happened during COVID. Mm, and we saw how things unfolded with COVID-19. But how prepared is Singapore for MPOX or any other infectious disease, Professor? Well, I would think that Singapore is very, very well prepared, based especially on its experience and how well it responded during COVID-19. I think you will find a lot of people will hold up the Singapore response to COVID as the gold standard around the world. Singapore also builds on its previous experience with SARS back in 2003. And the effort, for example, is led by the National Center of Infectious Diseases in Singapore, led by Professor Vernon, Vernon Lee, as well as the new center, the Asia Center for Health Security at the Saul Sui Hock School of uh, Public Health. So I have no doubt that Singapore is very well prepared on all aspects of responding to infectious disease outbreaks. Earlier, you mentioned about uh, the clade one variant, uh, Professor, being uh, contained within Africa. But what do we know so far about this? What, what are the symptoms like? Um, I think this, the symptoms are basically uh, respiratory symptoms, muscle pains and aches, fever, importantly, a rash in, in different uh, parts of the body, uh, including, you know, the, the facial areas, the, the, even the genitals, the chest, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, what is worrying about this new variant is the fact that it is able to spread more rapidly Importantly, it seems to have a higher virulence, meaning it has a higher mortality rate. I think the WHO mentioned that it is uh, mortality is about 3% compared to about 0.2% during the 2022 outbreak. So you take all this together, it basically means that I think it's justified for the WHO to declare a public health emergency of international concern. And remember that it has now spread to about 12 or 13 countries in, in Africa with more than uh, 1,000 deaths collectively. 
Yeah, and we also understand, uh, Professor, that the virus is spreading among children in the Democratic Republic of Congo, and uh, this could likely be close skin-to-skin uh, -skin contact that could be transmitting the virus. What could this mean for Singapore, being densely populated, being a densely populated country, being a travel hub, and, and would measures now be any different? I don't think so. I think uh, I think you have interviewed in on CNA my good friend Dr. Leong Ho Nam, and he basically emphasized the fact not to be too concerned. It requires pretty close, uh, you know, skin to skin contact with an infected person. In other words, as Ho Nam said, if you go on the MRT and there are maybe people there who are infected, the, the risk is uh, is fairly low for that to happen. So it's all about uh, being aware of what the symptoms are being aware of, you know, continuously good uh, personal hygiene and, and basically just be alert if something should be happening in terms of your own uh, personal hygiene. I think there's really nothing to worry about here, like, you know, wearing of masks and social distancing, like what we saw during COVID. I don't think it's the same level of, of risk, but that's just my own uh, view. Vigilance is key in this instance. Uh, Professor Pang, thank you very much for speaking with us. That was visiting professor at the Yu Long Lin School of Medicine at NUS, Professor Tiki Pang.